morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, Tina? I'm pretty all right, too. Thank you. Uh, we're out in our sunroom today. Home again, home again, after our family weekend. So that's good, I guess. Back to social isolation, mostly. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, it's been pretty good for us. I'm uh, continuing the low-key lake weekend look. <laughs> <laughs> Last week I put on makeup Monday through uh, Thursday specifically for this live stream. This is my uh, this is my COVID nineteen look. So this is what I'm going it's, with. It's eighties pale chic. <laughs> I think it's the term we're looking for. Yes, there. That's what I'm going for. So um, today we want to talk about something that uh, I have talked about before but we haven't talked about it together. And it's this idea of how prevalent wine culture is among, in particular, middle-aged women. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Um, it's troubling a little bit how the t-shirts and the tea towels and the pot holders and the memes and the just everywhere you turn is this not just suggestion of heavy drinking but almost insistence on heavy drinking to get through how horrible your marriage must be to get through how horrible your children must be how boring your life must be how um sophisticated you must be um it's it's a very weird thing because of course um you know addiction is a real problem yeah you know even this morning when we went to cycle bar there's a sign by the where you get your water that says i go to cycle bar because people judge me if i drink at 5 30 a.m which i guess is funny but you think <laughs> well funny unless you used to come home to see your husband drinking whiskey at 8 a.m um because here's the thing probably you shouldn't be drinking at 5.30 in the morning or at 8 a.m. or, you know, on a regular basis at noon, 2, or 4 p.m. I, I, it's just, it's a really interesting thing that it's so culturally accepted, particularly wine. Um, one of the things that became really clear to us when we came out with our nine-week series you know how, like, when you say to someone, you know, I'm thinking about getting a red car, suddenly you see a hundred red cars. As soon as we stopped hiding Maz's addiction, sobriety, this journey, and we started talking about it, then everywhere we went, people weren't just kind of drinking, they were heavily drinking. And um, the, the stuff with the... You know, um, like I just was, I went back to look at some things that I had written. Uh, why is it so impossible to drink eight glasses of water a day, but I can have eight glasses of wine in one meal? Or um, wine, how sophisticated people get wasted. Or um, how I feel when I see a glass of wine, and then it's a picture of uh, Renee Zellweger, you had me at hello from Jerry Maguire. And just stupid stupid stuff like that there is a flip side to that too because i've been i i have noticed alcohol adverts a lot more i've noticed first time i was sober we went to the street fair i couldn't i i didn't realize and this probably happened all the time but every bar in town spilled out into they had tables in the street outside the bar and they had specials on 32 ounce beers and, you know, if you're not an alcoholic, you know, it's, you know, it, it's totally up to you. You know, if you want to enjoy having your 32 ounce beer, just don't drive. Well, I mean, I think there are special occasions, which I use loosely. Yeah, I mean, you like, have, you it's know, fun. When it's, it's, if it's not an everyday occurrence, I mean, I'm a ju I don't judge people. I'm but I think, a little judge. I think it's, 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 especially with the wine and, and women who are, Middle aged. Getting slightly Middle -aged. above 20. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> or middle age in, in this country but i you know one of the my, one of the two things i like watching sports wise is you know, obviously soccer european football and the grand prix and i've noticed especially in the last couple of years certain countries especially the european grand prix the only alcohol advertising to have anything to do with that sport is non-alcoholic beer hmm that's interesting the heineken zero zero beer is the only beer that you'll see on a billboard advertising billboard as the cars come around a corner hmm. and you on most tracks especially in europe they, they don't advertise alcohol at these sporting events and it's very it's very seldom a, um watching a live feed um, football game from, especially from the English Premiership there's no alcohol in the st- ad- advertising in the stadiums I mean you can get a drink but you can't drink inside the stadiums either you right? can drink in the stadium you can't bring it to your seat right 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 but it's usually the only advert you see for alcohol is on the thing they superimpose on the on the screen that you're watching it mm. when they put the score up because mm-hmm. you know you're watching it and there's the, the, the and it's usually t- you know sp- Time for the game, advertised by Jim Bean or something. You know, it's, it's kind of weird, but it's never in the stadium. Mm. Well, you know, as someone who uh, accepts sponsorship dollars, we take kind of got to take money where we can get it. You know, within reason. And again, your point is, it's not that there should be no <laughs> alcohol anywhere and no references to it, and that because some people struggle with it, nobody should get to enjoy it. That's not the point. My, I think my point is just, it's, um, it's pretty easy because of how culturally acceptable it is, I'll just say, for middle-aged, sophisticated, wealthy people in particular, which is, I mean, we're not wealthy, but we're comfortable. We're um, sophisticated. <laughs> we'll, we'll, you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll self-define. Um, but it's pretty easy to, to be... Uh, to talk about that group of people because that's the group of people that we spend time with. Uh, so my my point is that's a slippery slope. So if if the social media direction points towards well, obviously everybody's having wine and we're having you know mimosas at breakfast and then we're having wine at lunch and then we're having throughout the day and blah blah blah. Fine, do what you want periodically. I mean, gosh, when we're in England, I drink a lot more because we stop in at pubs and the culture is very, very different. Um, That's fine to do it periodically, to do it within reason. But when it becomes so normalized that it is just um, a mindless thing that you are doing because it starts with the social media posts and it starts with the tea towels and the potholders and all of that stuff that I said and then it sort of it just sort of seeps into your day-to-day um, habit forming well then guess what pretty soon you're gonna have a problem with alcohol now it doesn't mean that you're gonna fall apart your life's gonna end as you know it and everything's gonna go into the complete gutter but it that's not where Dr. Mary thought he was going with alcohol either. You said something last week I thought was interesting about, you know, I didn't just wake up one day and yeah. think today's the day I'm going to just start slamming them back. It happens gradually it does. because you build up a tolerance, because you um, get more and more comfortable with it, because it seeps into... It becomes a crutch. Yeah, earlier parts of your day or later parts of your day or... You can come up with ways to excuse it in a, in a multitude of ways. So um, we're really not judging it. I mean, I, I think it's tacky when I see people wearing T-shirts that promote how much wine they drink because I feel like, what the hell is the matter with you? Don't be tacky. But, you know, whatever. I'm judgy about a lot of well, things I mean, like that. I suppose for you, it might be easier because, you know, you have lived, well, you do live with an alcoholic, but you've lived through the, the addiction part of, of, of this disease. But I'm lucky. I can I can watch an advert for, for alcohol and it doesn't affect me at all. And I know quite a few people it does, that it does, they can't watch them. Um, but I, I, I just remember this now. We were talking in one of my AA meetings um, 
one of the ones I go to is actually at a treatment centre so we have it's alcohol and narcotics in there and they were pa- trying to pass a bill to legalise cannabis use in North Dakota mm. and from a certain point of view I think yeah you know why not if you tax it you can make huge amounts of money regulate it you can regulate it you, you can make it you know it has a great potential in medicine it's less damaging than alcohol if you use it instead. It's not as impairing either, no. right? Yeah, I mean, the, I one, don't know. one of the I've problems is you can't do, you can't do a, like, there's no breathalyzer. Oh, Because it okay. stays in your fat cells. There's no, ooh, you know, they can't say. In your fat cells? Yeah, it metabol- it, so it's, it can be detected in a blood test longer. Interesting. What was it going with this? Yeah, so <laughs> I thought, yeah, I don't mind. But a lot of people trying to get off drugs and people who are living with their drug addiction said, you know what, you know, I'm upset because now they want to legalize it. Then, you know, what am I going to do? I've got that. I can hide from this because. Oh, it's hard to get. Because it's illegal. Yeah. It's not illegal to drink alcohol. And he said, well, that was my, you know, I'm happy. It's illegal to drink. It's illegal not to, to, to take drugs. And that was funny because a, a, a couple of weeks after that, um, someone off, off said something off the cuff at a, well, I was out at a, I don't know, we were, we were at a social event and someone said, I can't believe that someone are complaining about making this illegal. Who, who's against this? And I just said, yeah, well, I, I, I would imagine recovering drug addicts. And everyone just looked at me and went, who would have thought of that? It's, you don't, but it, it's a real thing to consider. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we all have to live with what we struggle with. I, I'm not equating, like, for instance, special K bars with drugs or alcohol, but I will tell you, I can't have special K bars in the house. Cannot have them in the house. I could eat a pan of special <laughs> K bars. I could eat so much that I would throw up and I would come back to them. I have no capacity to control them, so I can't make them. And I, again, I'm not equating them, but I'm saying I understand that um, compulsion to just have more and more and more even to the point of making myself sick. So, uh, you know, we have to live with what we struggle with. But I also just think it's really an interesting thing that we've decided that um, excessive wine drinking is culturally appropriate because it's somehow got a level of sophistication to it. So we have a question, uh, Dr. Mary. Do you think from your perspective there are more people who struggle with alcohol issues in America or Europe? And Europe is broad. Let's go with England. I'm going to tell you my perspective, but it's limited. I would say America. I less people drink and drive in Europe because the penalties even fewer if you want to be grammatical. <laughs> because the, the severity of the of of the consequences is is more is so much dire. I mean, America does have an incredibly lax drink driving limit. You know, point zero eight. That that's a lot of three two beer to drink to even get to that level of intoxication. And you're actually drunk before you reach that point. And then you hear about people that they test. You know, they blew a point three, and you think, well, how how did you even see the car, but let alone get in it? Yeah, and there's people who've had you know 15 or 16 DUIs. There's some guy that made the local news because he had his 17th DUI. Yeah. So, back to the question. I, I think, and again, this is a big country. You've got a big population here. So if you you got to take that into account, but I think yes, I think more people drink here to excess than they do in Europe. It just feels to me like they they manage it better. They don't say to people, you cannot drink until you're 21. Um, you know, it's sort of gradually introduced into people's lives in a much less dramatic black and white kind of way. Um, so families are exploring it kind of together. They're introducing it to their children, which, you know, good or bad. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it certainly feels it's also, like it's It's more. also the speed at which you drink alcohol. I mean, you can go out and have three beers and, you know, 
an, an alcoholic drink's supposed to be sipped anyway, and don't think, oh, the ex, the, the alcoholic speaking, I'm preaching. But you are, you sit. In 15 seconds. You sit, but you know, there's a difference between that. No one in Europe holds someone else upside down, puts a tube in their mouth with a funnel on the end, and pours cheap beer down it, and then everyone cheers. That's an American thing. So the yeah. binge drinking thing in this country is definitely a lot worse. Yeah. Okay, we're going right, to wrap it up today. Don't wear tacky t-shirts that say things like, I only have one glass of wine a day, and then it's the size of the wine bottle. It's just tacky. Don't be tacky. That's my parting shot for today. Uh, We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. Bye.